I don't remember Cedar Point ever advertising their Halloween event as haunt. Like they are in this poster. I wonder if that's something new that they're gonna try to do. Always remember it is just Halloween. Whenever I come to Halloween, there's a certain order I do the haunts in because they just flow better. And the first haunt I usually try to hit up is this one, Hex Haunt. This is over here by the gatekeeper. It's real easy to get to. The other thing Hex Haunt, Hex Haunt is, is it doubles now. During the day you can bring kids through with the lights on and it sounds like there's like little challenges and little puzzles they can do from room to room to progress through it. So I think they started that last year or the year before and it looks like they've added a couple other haunts that are going to do something real similar to that. So in just two short weeks, Ocean Motion is going to be transformed into Ocean Potion and they're going to dye all this water red. Or at least it was red last year. And I know Ocean Potion is coming back. So. I think it dyed a different color, <laughs> like green. And I don't think they want to dye it green, it already looks a little green. Erie Estate's always the second haunted house that we hit up for Halloween weekends. It's right back here by Planet Snoopy. So that's not too far from Hexed. There you go. It's a cool mansion theme. I think this is this other haunt that they're going to do something special for the kids during the day, similar to Hexed. I think they're doing that for three haunts. I, Pretty sure this is one of them. And it sounds like, uh, like I said, you're gonna be able to do puzzles and little challenges. They also used to have a dinner here that you could do, but I don't think they're doing that anymore. I think last year was the last year. This is a little entrance to your estate. It's where you come and wait in line. That that skull is taking some damage. <laughs> that poor Bucky. At first, I thought his skull was on backwards. But no, it looks like people just have gone through and destroyed your buckies. Look, I can sympathize, man. I get it. I understand 100%. So the Trail of the Forsaken is a new featured item this year at Holly Weekends. And it's going to be back by the Frontier Trail. They took out Screamworks, which is a really awesome scare zone. And I'm pretty sure this is just going to be a scare zone. It says scare zone, and it's not going to actually be a trail like... Cutthroat Cove or Blood on the Bayou. After we hit up Pets, we hit up Curious State. The next best one is Blood on the Bayou. This is an outdoor trail. But it's actually one of my favorite ones here at Cedar Point. It's back here by the dragster. As you can see, they've got their facade up. They got a couple of ghost ride catfish there. That's a Unit 71. <laughs> it's like a double Siamese twin hillbilly. So not only do they got the boat out for Blood on the Bayou already, they're playing the music. All the weekends, the monster turns into the friendly monster for kids, and it looks like they already got some little goofy faces up on the cards for it. I think the other thing they do is play some uh, good Halloween songs, like Monster Mash and stuff like that. So, I think it's awesome they do that with some of the rides, change them over. My kids love the monster, as do I. Lindsay doesn't. Spinny makes her sick. We're heading back into Frontier Town, which has three Halloween attractions back here. Three good ones, too. The first one is Frontier Town actually turns into Tombstone Territory, which is a cool western themed uh, scare zone. But it's a pretty large one. It's pretty good. It's got, what does it have? It has like wagons and skeleton horses and coffins and horse drawn hearses. It's themed just like the town back here, fits the theming. And it's a, it's a good one, I really like that one. After walking through Tombstone Territory, you can go to the haunted house back here, Deprivation. This is located underneath the New Steel Vengeance. Kind of like a blackout maze. It's, uh, it's not too bad though. But you're gonna wanna do this after Tombstone Territory. There's the cool pirate ship facade for Cutthroat Cove. Well, the sign's not over here for it. That is the entrance to it. And you're gonna wanna do this one after deprivation because it does, the exit is over on the other side of the Maverick. This is another one of their outdoor trails. Now, they don't distinguish on their signs. They say like six scare zones, six haunts. And I think they call this a scare zone, but it's not. It's one direction you walk through and it's more like a haunted trail, not one of the scare zones like Tombstone Territory where you can walk back and forth. It's free flowing. Uh, this is a one direction. You walk one direction and you keep moving. No loitering. There you go. There's the sign for Cutthroat Cove. But like I said, the entrance
entrance isn't here. It's actually further down a ways. It's also got a little crow's nest. So it looks like so far they have all of their, you know, haunt facades, trail markers out, but that's it. I don't see any other decorations. So there's another scare zone. I don't remember the name of it. It looks like they're starting to set up for it. They had it last year. It was kind of some sort of like creepy old town festival. You can see they're making little the little buildings for it. They fill these up with strange little games and stuff. This one's back in front of the antique car place and the town museum. Well, actually, I'll show some see if I can find some brief clips of when I went last year. It's not going to be anything long or too telling, but it'll kind of give you an idea of what's going to be inside these things. there should give you an idea of what this is going to look like back here. After exiting Cutthroat Cove, the next haunt you'll see is back here by the Wave Swinger, and it's Beer Mounds Freak Show. This was new last year, and it was actually really good. It had a lot of good detail in it. They've got uh, one section of it. It's like a, well, what do you call that where all the carnies are staying? Like a carny camp type thing. they got trailers and all kinds of cool stuff. It looks like they're side pieces from Unit 70, that clown thing with the fangs. But yeah, this is a really good one and it's definitely worth checking out. And those are the times that the haunts and the outdoor scare zones open for Halloween weekend. So on Fridays they don't open till 8. The park opens at 6. Stuff doesn't start till 8. And Saturdays it starts at 6. Sundays at 3, but I don't think they run the outdoor scare zones on Sundays. And I think the park closes at like 8 o'clock, so just be aware of that. Here in Frontier Trail, there's corn stalkers. This is what you're going to want to hit up after uh, Pier Grounds. And I'm not sure why. It's a really good haunt. It's another outdoor one, a one direction one. It's not a scare zone. But this line is always long. It's a long, long way always to get into corn stalkers. What they do is they, I think they drain Thunder Canyon and they put part of it in there. In fact, you know what? I'm going to get up over here. Up here on the observation deck, I can see part of corn stalkers. They don't have the corn up yet, but... And they don't have all the water out yet. <laughs> but you can see, get a general idea of what it's going to look like. And the entire thing, they'll fill it all with corn. You won't see anything but corn. Corn, fog, and cow poop. That's what I smell right now, because you exit through the barn, and I can smell it from here. But this is a good one. You know may not be heavy on props, but it's fun with the fog and the lights and the uh, actors blend in really well with the corn. It's good. Yeah, look, they're storing some of their fog out here. Looks like 455 gallon drums of fog. You know what? That's not fog. That's the fireproofing. So they must fireproof the corn. Let me give you an idea of what they use to make some of their stuff out here. They just hang, I believe they hang scarecrows from all these poles. But I'm not sure you can get up here. You may be able to. I'm really not sure. I've never tried. Up on this observation deck when the haunt's running. That'd be cool if you could. I believe this is the exit for corn stalkers. Or maybe it's right here. Maybe you come around here and exit. But you definitely walk through this barn at some point during the haunt. But what you're going to want to do is come out corn stalkers and then immediately turn to your right and go right into Slaughterhouse. Let's see if I can get a shot of the building itself. I can't find a real good spot to get a clean shot of the building of Slaughterhouse, but you can kind of see part of it up over this fence. The Trail of Forsaken is going to be somewhere back here along Frontier Trail. I imagine it's going to be the whole thing just like Screamworks used to be and it's going to be a scare zone. But I don't know for sure. We got the Halloween's hearse out. I think this is a photo op, isn't it? 
usually. So that's pretty cool. They got that out. Yeah, I'm surprised. I thought they'd have well, not a lot of decorations up, but I thought they'd have a little bit more out in the park already because they are they got to run in two weeks. This year for Halloween weekends, they're going to be transforming the Blue Streak into the Boo Streak. So I don't know what they're going to do for the Boo Streak. I'm excited to see. Next to the Blue Streak, they have Magical House on Boo Hill. That's pretty cool. They got the Masada up now. This is a kid-friendly haunt that they run, so there's no scares. There's, you know, spooky scenes, but not over-the-top spooky. They're kind of cheeky. Spooky, and I do believe the kids get candy when they exit the haunt. At least they used to. So, like I said, this is great for your young children if they're afraid of haunts. I mean, my kids do all the scary haunts. They love them, even the littlest one. And they have since they were tiny, they barely could walk. They love going through haunted houses, so they do those. But not all kids are like that. But this is a good one to take your kid to if he is, he or she is afraid of haunts. Oh, I got these little guys. I don't know what they are. <laughs> Kind of a little cartoony gargoyle. Finally, the last house I suggest you try going through is the Zombie High School. It's, uh, you can't see it, but it's back beyond those fence pieces there. Now, admittedly, Zombie High School is immediately to the left of the entrance when you walk in. However, I suggest doing it last because it's always crowded at the beginning of the night because it is the first haunt that people see when they first walk in. So other than that, the other things that they'll have that I didn't show... Oh wait, one more thing on Zombie High School. This year, during the day, they're going to have a thing called Zombie Junior High. And that's also going to be like a daytime walkthrough haunted house for the kids. They're not going to have any scares. And again, they're going to have puzzles and challenges. I don't know what those puzzles and challenges are going to be or what they're going to be like because I've never done the daytime walkthrough ones with my kids. But I really want to check it out this year. So that's now up to three of those types of haunts you can take your kids through. Well, four if you count Boo Hill. The other stuff I didn't show that they're going to have a ton of is just the Great Pumpkin Fest stuff. Right? The the great pumpkins everywhere. Yeah, but I mean the Pumpkin Fest stuff for the kids. There's just tons and tons of stuff. They oh, do yeah. like a corn maze, a hay maze, a little tractor course, uh, bubble pits. Huh? They have crafts. They have crafts, they have trick-or-treat stations. I didn't show where that stuff's going to be because it seems to move around from year to year. I'm not entirely sure where those stations are going to be. But we'll be back in like two weeks. They're usually right around Kitty Kingdom. Well, they usually do the trick-or-treat stuff in Kitty Kingdom. But anyway, it's just so much stuff. That's what makes this event great. You know what I mean? Because it's got kid stuff. Just tons and tons of kid stuff available all day. And then the haunts at night. Yeah. And it's just... Yeah, and it's the same... It's not an extra ticket price to Don't do they Halloween do like weekends. A costume thing for the kids too? I think they do, and I think they do like a spooky parade. And... Yeah. But anyway, what I like about it especially is the fact that it's not a separate ticket. It's all one ticket. You just buy it. It's just your normal ticket to get in. Yep. You know, at the beginning of the day, and it's all day. They don't kick you out of the park like some other theme parks do. Yeah. And that's it. That's my entire route suggestion for Halloween weekends. So I will be back in two weeks to film opening weekend of Halloween weekends and the Great Pumpkin Fest. So I can't wait for that. I'm really excited. I love that event. It's so fun. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss those videos. And thanks for watching.